morning students how are you all hope all of you are fitted fine at home so now let's start with our social science class so students what we will do today what we will discuss yes anyone any guesses that what we will do today so students today we will do a recapitulation of unit 1 our country we will take chapter 1 of our social science book yes and what is the chapter 1 of our social science subject yes tell me do you know the face of our motherland so students today we will do the recapitulation of the face of our motherland and we will do the back exercise and the book exercise of this chapter first we will do a quick recapitulation of the chapter and then we will do the book exercise so that you can write in the notebook and then start learning the chapter back exercise so now let's start with the recapitulation of the face of our motherland india now the topics which we will discuss in this chapter will be physical features of human beings physical features of a country our country india the crown and the cone of India, India and the world, India and its neighboring countries, physical divisions of India. Now, if we want to describe any human beings phys physical feature, what we will do? Yes, if we want to describe any human being, what we will descri describe about him or her? We will discuss about the shape of his eyes or her eyes. We will discuss his, the shape of the nose face and lips. We can also discuss about her weight and height. Then only we can tell about the physical features of a human being. So all these things, the shape of his or, or her eyes, nose, face and lips, weight and a height of a human being, all these are the physical features of a human beings. In the same way, students, there are the physical features of a country also. If we want to describe a country, if we want to tell about a country, the country also have some physical features. And what are the physical features of a country? The physical features of a country are mountains, rivers, hills, plain, coast, plateaus, which are there in the country. All these are the physical features of a country like these are the mountains which tell about which are the physical feature of a country these are the hills these are plateaus now you will see the rivers and the coastal plain area and this is the plain area so all these features are the physical features of a country and if we want to describe a country we also tell about the physical features of the country like uh, the countries mountains rivers hills plains coast plateaus so all these are the physical features of a country now we will discuss about our country india our motherland india is a very big and beautiful country as we all know the wide variety in its physical feature make india a very interesting land to study so we have so many physical features we have mountains in our country hills are there rivers are there plateaus are there so a wide variety in our in the physical feature of our country india makes our country a very interesting land to study now we will study recapitulate about the crown and the cone what is the crown and the cone of the india yes you know now so look at the physical map of india this is a physical map of india and if you see the to the physical map of india we find that the northern side of india is shaped like a crown the great himalayan mountain ranges is indeed the crown of india and the pride of all indians many rivers originate from himalayas and flow through the plain in different parts if the north is the beginning of india the south is the tip of the nation it is clear from the map that the southern part of india is shaped like a 
crown so you can see the southern part of india in the map it is just looking like a crown so it sh shaped like a crown so the southern part of india is called the crown of india and if you see toward the north of india it is just sh shaped like a crown so the northern part of india north side of india is known as the crown of india where the great himalayan mountains are located so if the north is the beginning of india the south is the tip of the nation the length of our country from north to south is about 3200 kilometers so approximately it is 3200 kilometers and exactly it is 3214 kilometers while the breadth from east to west is about 3000 kilometers so it is about 3000 kilometer but if we talk about the exact figures the breadth of from east to west it is 2,933 kilometers. The maximum width of India is at the center and that it decreases while going southwards. The southern part of our country is a peninsula. It is surrounded by Arabian Sea on the west side, Bay of Bengal on the east side, on its southern side by the Indian Ocean. So our country India is surrounded by three water bodies. What are they? Arabian Sea on the west side, Bay of Bengal on the east side and south uh, towards the south side it is Indian Ocean. The Tropic of Cancer passes through the middle of India. So you can see from the map on the left hand side of India there is a dotted dotted line which is passing through the middle of India. That line is a Tropic of Cancer which makes that area a hot region. It makes a climate of that particular area hot. Now we will talk, as we know, India is the seventh largest country of the world. It is located in the south of India. So you can see in the world map where it is, the, our country India, the yellow shaded portion is the India. And so it is located in the south of Asia continent. The country is so large that an ocean is named after India. So our country is so large that the ocean is named after our country, and, uh, country India and what is the ocean's name which is named on our country India that is Indian Ocean. Thus we have an Indian Ocean which lies to the south of India. So towards the south of India we can see Indian Ocean. Now the India and its neighboring countries. We will discuss about the India and its neighboring countries. India has surrounded by many, has surrounded by many countries. Some big and some small. So what are the countries which are surrounded by India? We will discuss what are the neighboring countries of our country India. So the countries which are the neighbor of our country India are Pakistan, Afghanistan, China, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bhutan, Myanmar and Bangladesh. So these are the neighboring countries of our country India. Now we will discuss about the physical division of India. The southern point of the Indian mainland is Kanyakumari. So the southern if, uh, point of Indian mainland is Kanyakumari. You can see in the map right hand side where is Kanyakumari on the tip the southernmost point of the, our Indian mainland this is Kanyakumari. Indra point which is in on the Andaman and Nicobar Island is however the southernmost tip of the country as a whole. So you can see Indra point on the left hand side this is in this is located in Andaman and Nicobar and it is the southernmost tip of the country as a whole. So if we talk about a country a union te territory if we talk about the uh, whole country then the Indra point is the southernmost tip of a country. But if we talk about the Indian mainland, then Kanyakumari is the southernmost point. So what is this Indian mainland? First we will discuss what do what is there in Indian mainland. So now if you see that Indian mainland, the land ranging from Himalayas to in the north, so you can see the land ranging from Himalayas in the north to the Hima, 
Kanyakumari in the south of India is called as the Indian mainland. So, if we start from the north, from the Himalayas and towards the south, tip towards the Kanyakumari, this whole area is called as a Indian mainland. This means the part of India which does not lies in the sea. So, as we know that Anman and Nicobar Islands and Lakshadweep Islands are also a part of our country India. But if we talk about Indian mainland, then in Indian mainland, it, Anman and Nicobar Islands and the Lakshadweep Islands are not added. They don't, they don't add in the Indian mainland. We only talk about the Indian mainland. And the Indian mainland is what? The Indian mainland is the part of India which does not lies in the sea. So, if we talk from the north, from the Himalayas to the south of Kanyakumari, this whole area consists of Indian mainland. And so, we can say the part of India which does not lies in the sea is called the Indian mainland. Now, you understood what is Indian mainland? So, we, for example, Anman and Nicobar Islands and Lakshadweep Islands are not a part of Indian mainland. These together with the Indian mainland form the Indian Union. So, if we talk about Indian Union, then Andaman and Nicobar Islands and the Lakshadweep Islands plus Indian mainland, all these together makes the Indian Union. But if we talk about Indian mainland, so Indian mainland is only a part which does not lies in the sea. Okay. So, now we can discuss about the physical features of India. So now you understood what are the physical features of India. So the physical divisions or the physical features of our country are as under. So what are the physical divisions of our country India? The northern mountains, the northern plains, the great Indian desert or the Thar desert, the southern plateaus, the coastal plains and the islands. So, all these features are the part of the physical feature of our country, India. Now, let us recall this, these are, this is a summary of the chapter. India is a big and beautiful country with different kind of landforms. We have mountain, rivers, hills, plateaus in our country. India is the seventh largest country in the world. The physical division of our country are the northern mountains, the northern plains, the Indian desert, the southern plateaus, the coastal plains and islands. So, these all are the physical divisions of our country. Now, we will discuss about some new terms or the word power which we have to, you have to learn. These are the new terms. You have to learn the definitions and the meanings of these terms. So, what does this peninsula mean? A peninsula is a piece of land surrounded by water on three sides. Indian mainland, the part of India which does not lies in the sea is called Indian mainland. For example, Andaman and Nicobar Islands and Lakshadweep Islands are not a part of Indian mainland. Now students, we will do a book exercise. This is a home assignment and this is, this is a book exercise which we will do today. We have done the recapitulation. Now we will do the fill in the blanks which are there in your book exercise or back exercise of chapter 1. Now tell me the dash ocean is named after India. What is the answer? What is the name of the ocean which is named after India? Yes, we have now discussed in the recapitulation also. The answer is Indian Ocean. So the Indian Ocean is named after India. Now tell me the second fill in the blanks. The distance between the east and the west corner of India is what? Tell me the distance between the east and the west corner of India is what? So the distance between the between the east and the west corner of India is 2933 kilometers. So what is the distance between east and west corner of India? It is 2,933 kilometers. Now, India is the dash largest country in the world. So, on which number of a country India comes in the world? India is seventh largest country in the world. 
the southern most part of indian mainland is what is the southern most point most part of indian mainland i am talking about indian mainland yes so the southern most part of indian mainland is kanyakumari what it is it is kanyakumari and if we are talking about the southern most most point of our country then it will be indra point yes but as we are talking about the southern most part of indian mainland so the answer will be kanyakumari so don't be confused if we are talking about indian mainland southern most part then the answer will be kanyakumari and if we will talk about our country's southern most point then it is indira point okay but here in this fill in the blanks we are asking about the southern most part of indian mainland and the answer is kanya kumari now we will discuss about the tick the correct to the west of india is what is towards the west of india arabian sea or bay of bengal what is the answer to the west of india is arabian sea or bay of bengal what is the answer and the answer is arabian sea to the west of india there is arabian sea pakistan is to the second tick the correct pakistan is to the option r east of india or west of india so where is pakistan pakistan is to the yes it is to the west of india so the correct answer is west of india now the third tick the correct is bhutan neighbor of india tell me students is bhutan neighbor neighbor of country neighbor of india is bhutan a neighboring country of india yes or no tell me the answer is yes so the correct answer is yes now which water bodies originate from himalayas which water bodies originate from himalayas they are the seas which originate from himalayas or there are rivers which originate from himalayas tell me so the correct answer is rivers the rivers are the water bodies which generate from himalayas and they through place they go to different different parts of the country yes we have discussed this now we will discuss about the yes so now students we will discuss about true and false we will do true and false so what is the first statement india is a small country so is this statement true or false india is a small country so this statement is false because india is a big country now let's go to second statement myanmar is a neighboring country of india so is this statement true or false myanmar is a neighboring country of india so the statement is true as myanmar is a neighboring country of india let's move to third statement of true and false the himalayas are situated in the east of india so is this statement true or false the himalayas are situated in the east of india so the answer is false this statement is false because the himalayas are situated in the north of india now we will go to fourth statement many rivers originates from himalayas so is this statement true or false this statement is true because it is true that many rivers originate from himalayas yes so now students we will discuss about true and false we will do true and false so what is the first statement india is a small country so is this statement true or false india is a small country so this statement is false because india is a big country now let's go to second statement myanmar is a neighboring country of india so is this statement true or false myanmar is a neighboring country of india so the statement is true as myanmar is a neighboring country of india let's move to third statement of true and false 
the himalayas are situated in the east of india so is this statement true or false the himalayas are situated in the east of india so the answer is false this statement is false because the himalayas are situated in the north of india now we will go to fourth statement many rivers originates from himalayas so is this statement true or false this statement is true because it is true that many rivers originate from himalayas yeah so now student there is a read and gain some knowledge some extra knowledge which you should know so the word geography it is about geography you have listen you have you heard this word geography from anywhere student this is a branch of social science only when you will become you will come in sixth class you will study uh, you will have a subject geography but before that what does this geography word means so the word geography comes from two ancient greek words geo which means earth and graphy which means a description or a drawing so what does geography means geography means earth description or a drawing of earth to get to know different places both big and small people study geography so why people study geography people study geography to know about different places to know about different places whether they are big or whether the places are small geography shows us different places and even help us understand just where we are in this big world so what does geography subject help us geography help us in understanding not just about the different places places it also tell us where we are in this big world where we are in this big world so now you understood what is geography how does this word geography come from and what does this word geography means yes so now students we have done the book exercise of this chapter we have done the recapitulation of this chapter and students just write down these fill in the blanks book exercise in your notebook and start learning the the back exercise dear parents this video is only for learning purpose and we will also share the pdf of book exercise and the chapter recapitulation with you all so that you can help your words to understand the chapter and do the 